I'm really pleased to be a speaker today. I'm happy I can uh, present this topic. And um, I'm Agnieszka Lisek. I've been working in SoftServe for uh, about six months. And this presentation is about the topic I had to investigate during my first project in SoftServe. Uh, actually, I am not on this project anymore. So I'm looking for the new project for new opportunities to improve my skills or to develop new skills. So the, the, this project was undertaken, I, actually it's still ongoing. <laughs> and so this project uh, was for like beverages company. And uh, I, I, I'm not sure if we can always like say what is the project name, etc. like in, uh, internally, but okay. <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, so the analysis, data analysis were provided in, in Tableau and Grafana tool. And today I will speak about the Grafana and option to uh, implement multi-languages. We can call it internationalization. And this was one of my tasks at the beginning of the, of the project to investigate if it's possible and how we can implement it. Okay, so I will start the presentation. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, so this is the topic. <laughs> and uh, first I will uh, start with the small agenda uh, of this presentation. So uh, at the beginning, I will present you this uh, small overview of this tool and how, how we can use it in which cases. Then I will go to the, uh, to the first solution, how we can implement uh, translations, multi-language options. Uh, then I will switch to the second solution, uh, which is um, just typing some translations on the uh, database site. Then I will uh, shortly present the third solution, which is not <laughs> the best one, but it's still possible. So on like data layer concept, where we can implement uh, translations just on the um, like raw, raw uh, data level. And at the end, I would like to present you how to add some new translations to the uh, solutions which I uh, which I would present. So I will show you how like like a real case how to add it, and at the end there will be time for some Q and A's. Sorry, because you see this. Um, okay, so I don't know how to okay. Uh, so what, what is the uh, Grafana BI tool? It is a web-based tool and it is a multi-platform open source analytics tool. So everyone can uh, just download it and test on, your, on his site. Uh, the main usage of this tool is to analyze the real-time um, real data or time series uh, data. And it's really good to, to display like even one uh, second uh, um, they, like data with one second refreshment or even like real time streamings where we can see like um, um, graphs moving in time. So it's really nice way of presenting this type of data. Uh, on the project, we, we use uh, enterprise version. Uh, it has some additional um, capabilities like for example, performance checking or usage monitoring, et cetera. And it's, available on premise uh, installation or also uh, as, a, as a cloud service. It is of course expandable through uh, plugins. Mm, plugins are written in JavaScript. Uh, usually uh, they are written by uh, um, React.js or D3.js. And there are some types of plugins. So there are some um, official plugins which we can download from the Grafana website. But there are also some plugins written by users available usually on a GitHub. Uh, and uh, when it comes to uh, data sources for this type of tool, it, there are usually time series databases like InfluxDB, Prometheus, Graphite, Loki. And on, uh, in, uh, in my examples, I will, um, like all of these examples, which I will present you, will be using InfluxDB uh, data source. So uh, 
uh, today, this presentation is about this investigation, how to implement multi-language. The project was for tar a Turkish company uh, and they wanted to have like everything available in English and Turkish because uh, the, uh, the main goal was to analyze the plant, um, plant performance and production performance in, in plants. And a lot of guys there, they didn't uh, speak English, so they wanted to have also like everything in Turkish. But uh, the main goal was to uh, translate dimensions and measures, not, not like um, uh, user interface. So the most important for them was to translate just the namings inside the visualizations. And I checked uh, like the latest version of Grafana, if anything has changed. Unfortunately, <laughs> the newest, newest version still doesn't support the internationalization by default. Um, the topic uh, was raised like uh, on 2014. So for seven years, nothing has changed. And a lot of uh, people complain about this. And there is a GitHub discussion started in 2014. And there is this link for, for this. And here, some people, they uh, put translations for user uh, interface. But um, I didn't focus on user interface. I focused on how to translate the data itself. So if you would like, you can check later these discussions and some options uh, written by, by uh, users, by developers <laughs> of, of Grafana. So uh, how did I investigate this topic? I was just searching in the internet and I found uh, the nice community, Hive Eyes, where this topic uh, was raised and um, discussed. And uh, so, then I just try to implement the solutions described on this uh, community. Maybe I will go there. Yeah, so, okay, it's like two years old. There are some solutions. I started with the, this one because it looked quite, it looked quite easy and fast to be implemented like as a draft for the customer. Uh, it's about um, installing some um, new database connection and then installing a plugin which uses this database connection. Uh, so, we'll go further. so to be able to use it, first we need to install the plugin. It's like official plugin uh, for a simple JSON data source. I just, uh, okay, I use Windows, so I just uh, did a typical uh, installation. Of course, it can be done by some commands like in Linux, et cetera. Maybe I'll go there as well. So I just uh, downloaded the files uh, and pla place it in, in the, the proper folder for Grafana installation. Sorry. <laughs> so I just have it in program files and and Grafana. So I just place this file as a as a, a like new plugin, and later I, I had to restart Grafana service, etc. Um, and then it just appears in in your Grafana that you have you see this J, uh, simple JSON, and I can add the new data source. Mm -hmm. And basically it uses by default this um, port 3003. But uh, the simple JSON value mapper, actually this one is not uh, official. It was uh, done by the uh, some community guys. Uh, and this, is more sophisticated to be installed. So I just downloaded a zip file for Linux. It can be probably installed by some commands, but I just also put it inside the um, plugin folder here. But the thing is it was written that I need to install it by, uh, install it by NPM. <laughs> I didn't know what it's about. And I had to ask someone from, from the project 
and he told me that I need to install Node.js and then uh, run the NPM uh, program uh, to be able to run this, um, this Grafana simple JSON value mapper. So here are all the steps I had to do. First, I just install Node.js as like typical Windows installation. Uh, then I check uh, if I have like what node version I have on my computer. And then I check if I have NPM, uh, like a global NPM installation. If not, I, we just need to uh, type, for example, in PowerShell, I used PowerShell uh, NPM install. But, uh, and I struggled a little bit uh, with this because I, I, I was still not able to run this Grafana simple JSON value mapper. And it appeared that I need to install NPM inside the Grafana, inside this plugin folder. So I will show you, sorry for switching so much, <laughs> but it had to be like this. So I had to install NPM inside this uh, plugin folder. And later, uh, I just, like I use PowerShell for running this NPM. Later, I just had to go to this uh, folder and, and type npm start and it worked. Uh, however, during the installations, I there were some uh, packages missing for npm, for example, express and so on. So it is quite, uh, sorry, it is quite sophisticated, um, this installation by npm, if someone is like more a backend developer, sh shouldn't have a problem with this. But uh, yeah, I, need, I, I needed some help from the person from the project. Uh, at the end, I was able to run this NPM um, inside this uh, plugin folder. And when it's running correctly, we can check that it's like under this, um, uh, our local computer and uh, port 3003, it's, we, we, we should see something like this and how to yes and then it starts like listening like searching for what we what we do so it's searching inside the file with the defi uh, with the translation definitions so what what was the, the so the main point to have it running is that here we have a file which stores the translations so Agnieszka, here we uh, just need to edit this file. Yes. I'm so sorry, Agnieszka, but we are still uh, watching your presentation. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Because I, oh, yeah, sorry. Maybe I will start sharing again. Mm-hmm. 